Good afternoon. My name is Mariana Lopez de Bart. We are here from Mexico and I'm really pleased and honored. It's a really privilege for me to be here together with the CEO and founder, Dr. Ruja Ignatova. I really thank you that you took the time to be with us and thank you so much for taking the time. Well, thank you for inviting me. Um, this is my first time in Mexico and um, I'm very, very excited to be here. I like the city, I like the country very, very much. And uh, you all know that for OneCoin, Latin America is a very, very strategic market because we believe that a lot of users are here in uh, Latin America. And uh, very, very soon we will open also an office in Mexico. So I'm looking extremely forward to the event here and to meeting as many leaders as I can actually here on site. So thank you for taking the time and doing this interview with me. Thank you, my pleasure. We know you are a really sure personality, really close to the people. Um, mostly from the other cryptocurrency owners, they are nobody knows who they are. And uh, you, from the first day, you are there. You are really approachable, and we can see you in events. We can see you meetings. We even saw you, and you took the time with us in the head office in Sofia. The purpose also of this interview is that we know a little more about Dr. Aruja Ignatova. <laughs> we want to know a little bit more about the face and the heart of OneCoin the cryptocurrency which is revolutioning the world. Well, I don't think I'm so interesting, but let's see what you want to know. Okay, let's go. Why did you actually choose to be a public personality instead of hiding like other people, like Bitcoin founder, for example? Um, I think why we chose to go this way is because uh, OneCoin is different from Bitcoin. I always say we're very grateful to Bitcoin for being the pioneer in the industry and actually to inventing the blockchain, inventing this um, concept. But um, when I started to think about cryptocurrency, I wanted to create a cryptocurrency for the mass market, for everyone. And I believe if you create something good and if you create something big, you not only need, don't need to be ashamed, but you also don't need to hide. We are very, very proud of our work. We, when I say we, I mean the whole team, the whole, you know, I believe also the whole two and a half million people who are with us. So um, how can I expect people to go out and to speak about OneCoin if I would hide and not speak about OneCoin? I'm very proud of what we have created. I am still very pleasantly surprised of the success that we have. And um, I believe it was the right time for the right idea. And OneCoin is known to be a transparent cryptocurrency and to be uh, an approachable, trustworthy cryptocurrency. And I don't think we would have been where we are if uh, the currency would have no face, if people could not ask questions, if uh, people would not know who we are. Exactly, exactly. The Brexit and the following collapse of the pound is a clear example how fragile the, our financial system is. Mm -hmm. Where do you think this... Uh, this current financial system is going to? Well, we need a financial system and we need the traditional banks. So traditional banks will never go out of uh, business. But of course, uh, countries always go through crisis. For example, I'm from Eastern Europe. I remember how we went to huge inflation. We have uh, countries where the government is not stable. We have countries where they have different crises. And um, I do not think that cryptocurrency should compete with fiat currencies. I see cryptocurrency more like virtual gold. You know, there's always have been demand for gold in the world. Why do people buy gold? Because they want to have some security, some independent value from their government or from the fiat money. And uh, this is what I believe is why cryptocurrency is so good. And the second thing, again, you have the limited amount of coins. So you cannot print as many coins as you want as a lot of, uh, you know, national banks do. So which role do you think OneCoin will play in it? Well, I hope that OneCoin will become the cryptocurrency of the people, like Facebook is the social media of the people of choice. I would like OneCoin not to be a coin for speculators. This currently is maybe Bitcoin. But I would like OneCoin to be a very stable currency, the first choice for merchants, and um, the first choice for people on the street who want to use cryptocurrency. I see as something like... PayPal, like Western Union, this is where I want us to be, where normal people can use it very, very simply. And uh, I hope one day 
that one coin will be the synonym of uh, cryptocurrency and not Bitcoin. So whenever people speak about cryptocurrency, that one coin will be one of the big examples they will use. New technologies are still male, male-dominated industry. How does it feel to be a super boss lady in this field? I, not only technology, we still live in a male-dominated uh, society. A lot of the top jobs are actually still with men. But um, I see more and more women get involved in jobs like this, more and more women having fun and doing things. I, for example, like numbers a lot. Yeah? So this is why I chose an industry like this. I like finance, I like numbers. I uh, feel actually very happy to be where I am. I don't know how I would feel if I was a man, but um, I feel that I do the right things and things that excite me. As long as I like going to work every morning, I'll continue working. According to a recent uh, study from the Cambridge University uh, Economic uh, Department, they said uh, women are, uh, tend to be more uh, social and more humanistic vision in economics. Uh, but still, one of every four students are just women. Well, first of all, there's a choice, of course, that we as uh, women make. What do you want to study? And a lot of us um, still study the softer skills and like education, arts and so on. I believe it's important that we have equal access to education, very, very important. And uh, somehow that we make also science touchable for girls and for women. So if you're not scared, for example, of maths or computer sciences, of course you as a girl might want to go and try it. So I believe that we as mothers also have to tell our girls that they can do whatever they want. And if they decide to do computer science, beautiful. If they decide to do education to become a teacher, still we should support them. And I do not believe, actually, that women are softer in business. Ask my people around me. I'm very clear, very focused, and uh, I believe um, that also some of our men like working also for a woman. It's a good environment that we create. Probably a bit more fun, more social, but still work needs to get done, yeah. Exactly. When did you knew exactly you wanted to dedicate yourself to this business? Well, uh, cryptocurrency is not a business that you wake up one day in the morning and decide, oh, I want to do cryptocurrency. <laughs> I was working for McKinsey and I was um, doing a lot of banking and insurance and international level. And I remember when I was reading some article, I was quite frustrated because I felt somehow everything got invented. You know, Facebook, it was invented, Google, the Internet, all these cool things, you know, where people come from zero to hero yeah, were all there and there was nothing left somehow. So... um. I was looking at Bitcoin and um, in the beginning I did not believe that it will work. I just thought this concept will die, it will not happen. And then uh, the more and more successful it got, the more interested I got into it. And I discovered that there are some very big advantages, but also some disadvantages. It was created, for example, uh, before the terrorism attacks and all these things. So. It also was not a mass market currency. And this was actually an opportunity that I saw and I got excited about it once I started thinking where the opportunities are. But um, to be very, very honest with you, the vision still develops and still gets bigger and more and more interesting. A lot of our users come to me and say, should we do this and that? And a lot of new ideas actually come up and um, it is uh, still very, very exciting, and um, until we make it to the top, I think I will not stop doing this. But I, of course, enlarge the team and get more and more support from professional people, because one person alone cannot do it and should not do it. Yeah. Who inspired you? It's a very difficult question, and I think, um, speaking about role models, uh, there's not one role model that I would say, oh, it was him or her. From the females, um, I had the luck to be mentored by a lady uh, in Bulgaria who worked very close with me. McKinsey has also some very interesting ladies, partners, actually. Not many, but interesting. And of course, I think currently Hillary Clinton is a very interesting person. Of course, I would not say I want to be like her, but some things really inspire me. Her dedication, persistence, and just being very focused and having a goal. So what I do is I just find people that I like, and I like this here, that there, and somehow figure it all together. Yeah. Yeah. Nice, nice example. Yeah. <laughs> Do you believe in luck? Well, I always say fortune favors the brave. So if you want to be lucky, you probably should create your own opportunities. And uh, the more opportunities you create, the more, of course, the chances to be lucky. But um, 
I have to be also, again, very honest. I have met some amazing people totally by chance and by coincidence. So uh, this has been extremely helpful for me. For example, Sebastian Greenwood, I met in a social setting, totally being introduced by a friend, and he was the one who gave us the opportunity for network marketing. Without this meeting, probably I would have done one coin in a totally different way. So yes, I was lucky. <laughs> if I believe in luck or don't, I was really lucky in some points of time. Yeah. How is Dr. Rudia when she gets home and takes her shoes off? <laughs> well, um, I'm not home a lot, unfortunately. So um, I like reading a lot. Um, I like going out a lot, too. Uh, I think I'm not that interesting. Uh, nothing special happens. I know people who have much more exciting and amazing hobbies than I do. But I like meeting my friends, my family, catching up on what's going on, and uh, reading a lot. I love reading. <laughs> In between all these travels, events, and meetings you have, where do you get time for your family? <clears throat> I don't have a lot of time, to be honest, for my family, but I want to change this a bit now. So from the 1st of October, I will do a bit, some changes, and expand the management team of the company a bit. I'm having a baby, and uh, it's a girl, and <laughs> very exciting, but also a bit scary, to be honest. So um, you have to make the time and the priorities. Work is extremely important, but in the end of the day, um, also family is very important, and they give us the strength to move on and to be creative. But, um, you know, some of my closest friends are actually at work. Some of the best relationships I have are at work, and um, we come to the office in Sofia, we feel like the top management feels close and like a family. We go off and out together, and uh, this is something I like very much. Do you like animals? I like animals, yes, uh, but I don't like pets too much. I like wild animals, I like lions. Uh, the lion is uh, one of the jewels that I like uh, a lot. Uh, I like them when they are very strong, the panther, the lions, you know, this wild power inside. But my brother has a lot of pets and he has two dogs, so I like them too, it's but I somehow prefer to see animals in the wild and <laughs> nature than uh, being locked up in a zoo or whatever. Nice. Yeah, he told me about a project you're, you're yes. starting to make with animals. Well, um, we have the foundation, um, my foundation, the One World Foundation. Unfortunately, I don't have so much time for it, but I have a very good team who is um, dealing with it. What I, <clears throat> the main purpose of the foundation is, of course, education, but um, the more and more we deal with um, causes and things like this, um, I get more and more passionate about child labor. So this is a cause that I want to focus much more in the next years of the foundation because I think it is really very sad. Um, small children being put to work and I saw some pictures that were really bad and some of these things happen in our core markets, Asia, Thailand. Uh, so we really would like to do something there. But speaking about the animals, we have also some projects because some of the team, as I said, feel very passionate about this. It's called the One Friend, and the whole office is involved in this. Uh, so they go and help animals in their free time. So they donate time, and we donate money. And um, I don't know, they have adopted several dogs and take care of uh, a lot of animals in their free time. So we support this too. Yeah. Oh, amazing. I love animals too. Yeah. Now, going back um, to OneCoin, we keep uh, hearing that's the future and that's uh, revolutionary markets, that's the future of payments. But why do you think exactly is it a revolution? The main reason I think why it is a revolution is because we have 2 billion people who are currently not banked. These people currently do not sit on the table like we are. You know, we can go and buy a nice dress out there, we can do a money transfer, whatever, but these two billion people cannot. So um, this is why I think if we use cryptocurrency to bring these people in our world, then we have created something amazing. Even if we get only 100 million of these people to the table or 200 million, this is a huge change in their life. And this is also why I believe that one coin has a value. As long as you go and you change people's lives for the better, your product has a value. Exactly. And um, this is what it is. So this is why I believe that cryptocurrency can exist out there and has actually a reason to be there. Of course, also revolutionize uh, the world, globalization, people want to do business globally easier and faster. This is also a reason why OneCoin will work very well. But whenever I think about the big picture and the vision, I always think first of the unbanked people, then I think of the merchants who want to do business all over, 
And then again, we think about the unbanked who want to do remittances, send small sums, you know, if they go and want to send 100 euro home and uh, somebody takes 30 euro away for fees, I don't believe this is fair. And this yeah. is not necessary. Yeah. This yeah. is what I think. When do you think the world will be with one coin usable completely? Like if we can come here and pay this hotel or travel to Spain and pay there in the well, supermarket? It depends a bit on several factors. I hope in two to five years cryptocurrency gets accepted globally. What would be extremely helpful for us is uh, if the regulators globally start dealing more with cryptocurrency. We are very well prepared for this, and I am probably one of the few cryptocurrencies who really asks for regulation, because this will make our life and our, you know, a lot of people do not trust new technologies, a lot of people do not understand, and when we start being regulated like financial institutions, I believe this will be a huge step forward. This is something we cannot influence, of course. But um, we have set the goal in two years, 10 million users, 1 million merchants, and this makes the currency pretty usable. Now, so to come into an end, what kind of message would you like to give to all these people, for me especially women, that um, still think or haven't had the chance yet to know about OneCoin? Why should they join us? Um, well, we currently do OneCoin in a network marketing approach. And I believe that women are so communicative and so eager to change the world in a good way. They don't think only about money, they think about the bigger vision. And I really believe that they can join us and they can do very, very good things and also earn money in a way that is very flexible for them and their families. The main message always has to be believe in yourself because nobody else will. But um, if you believe in yourself, you can achieve everything. And uh, I have come from nothing. Like really, my parents are not rich. I had um, a full scholarship for my studies. I could not have gone to Oxford without this scholarship. So it was for me uh, make or break. So I'm probably an example how you can make it. My pure parents are from Eastern Europe. Uh, the average salary there is 200 euro. So, and now look at us, we had a good idea. We believed in ourselves, but you have to work very hard. And then uh, a lot of things can happen. So. Believe in yourself and then miracles can happen. I still cannot believe where we are and how amazing everything is. And now we have to give back. So when you're successful, give back to somebody. Find somebody else, teach her, help them also change their life. Exactly. That's our job now with One Life. Share it and give it back. Everything was OneCoin is giving us now and is going to give us in the future. So thank you so much, Dr. Rija. Thank you. It was a very, very nice interview and a pleasure to be here. And I hope I will be much more often in Latin America and in Mexico. I really enjoy myself very much and I love the city. Thank oh, you. Thank you. Thank you so much.